In the Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote that a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Digital signatures provide part of the solution, but the main benefits are lost if a trusted third party is still required to prevent double spending. There is a concept of the need to minimize reliance on trusted third parties, and this concept is very important to how people store bitcoins. Banks have been used as places where you can deposit your money, and a part of what makes bitcoin more efficient to use for society is that it no longer requires you to have a bank in which to deposit your money. The bank creates an account or a ledger for you in their database to record how much money you've deposited with them. And what made the idea of Bitcoin exciting is that the Bitcoin network is the depository of your funds. It has now become possible that people just create a ledger on the blockchain, which is essentially a public database on which all records of deposits are stored. So in other words, instead of relying on banks to have custody over their money or wealth, people can now have self-custody over their Bitcoins and wealth. Self-custody in Bitcoin BSV means having full control over your funds without relying on third parties, such as exchanges or custodial wallet services to store or manage your Bitcoin. At its core, self-custody involves holding and securing your private keys yourself, as these keys are the only way to access and transfer your BSVs. This approach aligns with Bitcoin's fundamental principle of decentralization, where users are empowered to act independently without intermediaries. Self-custody eliminates counterparty risks, which is the danger that a third-party service might fail, they, become, they might become insolvent, or they can get hacked, or they might restrict your access to your funds. In short, therefore, self-custody ensures that only you have access to and control over your Bitcoins, providing the highest level of security and aligning with Bitcoin's original vision of peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. Hello, my name is Marquez from bsvsearch.com, and in this video, we're going to discuss what it means to have custody over your own money or over your own wealth. We will briefly discuss how you can store your Bitcoin SVs directly on the Bitcoin blockchain, without the need for any third parties. And also, I'll take you through a tool called BitSweep that will allow you to use your BSVs when you need to. So we'll first ask, what is self-custody with regards to Bitcoin like? At its most basic level, every Bitcoin SV, Satoshi, is recorded under a Bitcoin address in a decentralized distributed ledger called the blockchain. A Bitcoin address has a public key and a private key. This pairing of public and private keys form the foundation of Bitcoin's functionality. And the way many of us store our money is that we deposit it with a bank. They create our bank account and they record the money that we've deposited to them on their database. Each bank keeps, maintains, and owns its own database of the depositors' accounts. In Bitcoin, we can simply create what acts like a bank account, which is called a public key. You can transfer BSVs to it, and you can share the public key to everyone, and they can send you BSVs in exchange for goods or services that you provide to them, or maybe they're tipping you or gifting you BSVs. And this public key has an associated private key that only you should have because the private key is what the Bitcoin network will need from you to provide so that you can transfer your BSVs when you need to, when you need to use it for payment as a gift or a tip. This pair of public and private key is what I call a Bitcoin address. I may call it paper wallet or a cold wallet. I do not think of hardware wallets like Ledger or any software wallet that is configured to be connected to the internet, ready to send BSVs from one address to another as cold wallets. Therefore, when I say cold wallets in this and future videos and posts, 
Cold wallets are Bitcoin addresses that are not set up as a hardware or software that enables the Bitcoins to be sent or transferred to other Bitcoin addresses. Before we go further, it is best that I'll show you how you can create your own Bitcoin address. I've gone through this process using bitaddress.org in a previous video, and I'll provide you the link where you can watch the video. But for now, I'll just quickly generate a pair of public and private key that will make up a Bitcoin address, and we will use that for examples in this video. Let's open up our internet browser, go to bitaddress.org, and let's move our mouse around to randomize the Bitcoin address that we're going to get. Here now is our Bitcoin address. Here is the public key and here is the private key. We can share the public key with everyone, but the private key is for us alone. You should copy these keys and save it to a computer file that you might want to secure with a password, or you can also print this page or write it down. Whatever solution you want, it's going to have to be a method that will allow you to access these keys when you need them. So compared to creating an account with a bank in which to deposit money, notice how creating a Bitcoin address in which to store Bitcoins is so much easier and quicker, and it does not require you to have a minimum deposit and you are not charged monthly fees to have an account open. The next thing to ask is, why is it important to be able to store your Bitcoin in a Bitcoin address or a cold wallet or a paper wallet that you control? Having a Bitcoin address is all you need to deposit your BS fees on the Bitcoin blockchain forever. And so long as there are Bitcoin miners to process Bitcoin transactions, then you should be able to access your Bitcoin stored in your Bitcoin address in the future. Cold wallets are, to me, the best way to maintain independence from online vulnerabilities while you store your bitcoins. Now, cold wallets are ideal for long-term and short-term storage of your BSVs, whether it could be for months, years, or even just a few weeks. Any amount of BSV benefits from the security of a cold wallet, and it's got enhanced security by being disconnected off the internet. By being offline, cold wallets are immune to hacking, malware, and phishing attacks. If you are storing your BSVs in a wallet that uh, is connected to the internet and is ready to transfer your BSVs out of your wallet, then that's not good when it does get hacked, because then it's easy for the thieves to just transfer your wallet or your BSVs to their own Bitcoin addresses. Cold wallets are useful when you want full control of your BSVs. It ensures that no third party has access to your private keys, only you. This removes your dependence on other companies or business or services, which are often profit oriented and they are subject to fail over time. So by using cold wallets, you are mitigating what's called counterparty risks. Many third-party custodians have failed over time due to hacking, they might be having regulatory issues, or they might become insolvent. And, and this leads to you losing access if you're dependent on them. So cold wallets bypass these risks. By using a cold wallet, you retain full ownership of your BSVs and that's aligned with the core principles of self-custody and decentralization. This approach protects your funds against hacking, mismanagement, and the collapse of third-party services. Because let's face it, most businesses fail within five years. So by having control of your keys, you've got the peace of mind that um, in the future, when you do need to use your BSVs, you can have access to them by having your private keys. So when you're ready to use the BSVs that you've stored in your cold wallet, there are two ways 
to be able to access your BSVs by using what we can refer to as a warm wallet. If cold wallets are Bitcoin wallets that cannot readily send or transfer BSVs, then warm wallets are Bitcoin wallets that are set up and configured and can connect to the internet to send or transfer your Bitcoins. And there's two methods of doing this. The first way is to activate. The second way is to sweep or sweeping, it's called. To activate a cold wallet, a warm wallet can ask you to input your private key, and this will allow you to send or transfer your Bitcoins. The other way that a warm wallet can allow you to have access to your BSVs in your cold wallet is to sweep it. To sweep a cold wallet, a warm wallet can ask you to input your private key and then sweep or transfer the entire BSV balance of that Bitcoin address to another address that you specify. You can obviously then transfer to a warm wallet that has more features, that's more designed for everyday use. What I've noticed over at least the last couple of years is that many BSV warm wallets seem to not provide a way to activate or sweep a cold wallet. Apart from the BSV wallet Electrum SV, the other popular BSV warm wallets seem to overlook or neglect this very important feature of using Bitcoin. So on Twitter or x.com on the 3rd of December 2024, I reached out to people in the BSV community to tell me what wallets they use to sweep or activate their BSVs. I also tweeted that if we, the people, want self-custody over our BSVs, then cold storage is very important. It is a very underappreciated but very important feature for a wallet. I also explain that I'm looking for a very simple, most basic wallet that just sweeps the BSVs that you have in a cold wallet to another Bitcoin address. And to my surprise, a couple of weeks later, a developer in the BSV community replied back to my initial tweet informing me that he has, in fact, developed a solution he called BitSweep that can do just this most basic and fundamental task. So now I'm going to take you through BitSweep so that apart from Electrum SV, you also have another way to be able to access your BSVs that you've got stored in your Bitcoin address in the future. The first thing we'll need to do is to deposit a small amount for testing purposes to the same Bitcoin address that we generated earlier with bitaddress.org. For this purpose, we will use SendB Wallet. I will transfer 0 0.006 of a BSV. And for the description, we will say for testing to sweep. OK, and then 0 0.006 of a BSV is equal to 39 US cents. And we press send. And now it is sent. Let's also send some BSVs from Rock Wallet so that I can show you Rock Wallet in action if you haven't seen it already. I'll send about 0 0.01 of a BSV. And let's type to test how to sweep in the description, we are sending the equivalent of 64 US cents. Confirm. Rock Wallet asks for a pin to authorize the transaction, and it is sent. We will now go to whatsonchain.com to confirm when the transfers have been completed. I waited for a few minutes and now the transactions are confirmed. Okay, so now that we have deposited and collected BSVs on our BSV wallet, the cold wallet, we now want to use them. So let's go to bitsweep.org to sweep the balance of our cold wallet to another Bitcoin address. Let's type the private key of our Bitcoin address that we are using as a cold wallet. WIF stands for Wallet Import Format. 
and the private key that bitaddress.org provides is usable here. So paste the private key in this field and then the destination address is the Bitcoin address of where you want to transfer the BSVs to. This address could be another Bitcoin uh, address that you want to use for cold storage again. Or it could be that of another person. Or it could be that of a warm wallet that you use like Centbee, Rock Wallet, Handcash or Electrum SV. If we go to whatsonchain.org to check if the transaction has been broadcasted, we see that it is currently unconfirmed, which means it is now waiting to be included on the Bitcoin SV blockchain. It usually gets confirmed within 10 minutes. And if you're transferring to an exchange, some exchanges require more confirmations before they allow you to start trading. Being able to activate or sweep cold wallets are very important features for people to use Bitcoin, and it should never be overlooked. It is a vital feature that all warm wallets should provide so that people can take custody of their own BSVs by giving them the peace of mind that the BSVs they are saving can eventually be accessed and spent when it is needed. I hope you found this presentation very helpful and that uh, I've encouraged you to play around with these tools. BSV transaction fees cost almost nothing, so you can transfer uh, BSVs just to play around and test without it costing you too much. Now, thank you so much to Code Enlighten and the team there at Smart Ledger for their dedication and ongoing contribution to the BSV ecosystem. In a future video, I will also go through other wallets that can sweep or activate cold wallets, so please like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be notified when I release the next video. This is Marquez from bsvsearch.com wishing you a Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays and enjoy your New Year celebrations. Until next time, cheers. Bye-bye.